Hi, welcome back to Recap Storyteller. Today, I will recap a film titled Pompeii. Please subscribe, watch, and enjoy. The movie begins in Northern Britain in the year 62 AD. A young boy named Milo wakes up because of a commotion in the street. He goes outside to see what's happening. The Romans, led by Senator Corva, are attacking the Celts in an attempt to suppress a rebellion. Milo watches as the soldiers take the life of his father, who is the leader of the nomadic Celtic tribe. Milo's mother tries to save him, but a rider rushes past her, knocking her to the ground. Corva takes Milo's mother's life and orders the execution of all the Celts. Milo realizes that he might be next, so he pretends to be dead. His body, along with the bodies of others, is piled up and the nomad settlement is set on fire. The next morning, Milo climbs out of the mountain of corpses and sees his parents hanging from a nearby tree. He manages to escape and tries to survive. He spends a night under a tree in the forest, but soon the slave owner finds him. 17 years later, in Londinium, a Greek man named Bellador and his friend arrive at the local amphitheater's arena looking for something new. In the arena, they see Milo, who has become a gladiator. He easily defeats three Romans, sending them to the afterlife within seconds. The Greek sees his potential and decides to redirect Milo to Pompeii, closer to Rome, so he doesn't have to fight in the remote outback. During the journey, Milo notices a charming girl named Cassia, the daughter of a wealthy citizen who manages Pompeii. At one point, their wagon falls into a pit, causing a horse to fall and get severely injured. Cassia asks Milo to help end the horse's suffering, and he does so, which earns her sympathy. Once in Pompeii, Cassia, along with her best friend Ariadne, goes for a walk and slowly makes her way back home to her parents. Later, she meets her father and mother, but she avoids discussing why she was forced to leave Rome, where she had been for a year. In the evening, Cassia visits her beloved horse and asks her servant Felix to prepare the horse for a walk the next day. Meanwhile, Milo finds himself in the basement of the local amphitheater, where the gladiators are kept. Atticus, a friend of Bellador, takes notice of Milo and offers to bet on whether he can survive the night. Atticus is confident that Milo won't last an hour, so he puts two glasses of wine against him. Soon, several gladiators provoke Milo into a fight because he had taken the life of one of their brothers. The fight begins, during which Milo sends one gladiator to the afterlife and severely injures another. The Greek asks Bellador to take better care of his charges and sends Milo to Atticus's holding area. At the same time, Mount Vesuvius awakens, causing tremors in the area. Felix sees the nearby lake churning and tries to escape. The scared horse throws him off and runs away, leaving the helpless man who didn't have time to get out and fell to the ground in the morning. Atticus tries to learn Milo's name, but Milo ignores him because he doesn't trust anyone. Once in the arena, Atticus, the local champion gladiator, talks to Bellador. He reminds Bellador that after another victory, he should receive the promised freedom. The overseer agrees, but before Atticus can have his freedom, he has to fight one more battle. The only person brave enough to challenge the champion in a training match is Milo. From the beginning, Atticus shows that he's better, but Milo doesn't give up. At some point, their duel is interrupted because one of the gladiators tries to attack Milo from behind with a knife. Atticus sees this and saves Milo. Later, Atticus admits that he intervened because every gladiator must face death in combat, face to face. He doesn't want anyone to die unfairly, so he'll be the one to fight Milo in tomorrow's duel. Milo thanks Atticus for saving him, but warns him that he believes the Romans are deceitful and won't keep their promises. Corvus arrives in Pompeii with his assistant Proculus, but people in the town not only don't welcome the politician, but also turn away from him, which upsets Corvus. Cassia's parents, Severus and Aurelia, greet Corvus and invite him to a gala dinner. Later, Cassia's mother tries to talk to her and find out why she returned, but Cassia doesn't want to talk about it. When she notices her horse has returned home, she realizes something has happened to Felix. Atticus and Milo chat in their cell and discuss their practice match. They exchange remarks and are confident they will win. Atticus believes he'll become the champion and gain his freedom tomorrow, but Milo warns him not to be deceived because he thinks the Romans are treacherous and won't keep their promises. Their conversation is interrupted when they are chosen to be taken to Severus's house. Along the way, Milo spots Proculus and realizes that the man who killed his parents is in town. In Severus' house, wealthy ladies can rent any of the gladiators for the night for a substantial reward. Meanwhile, a wealthy citizen meets with Corvus and shows him plans for a new amphitheater. The official reports that the emperor won't invest in this project since he's only interested in Rome. However, he's willing to cover all the costs, with the condition that Severus brings his daughter to Corvus. Atticus, the tall and dark-skinned gladiator, attracts particular attention, while Milo is interested in only one person, Cassia. This is noticed not only by Cassia's friend, but also by her mother. 
Severus finds Cassia and introduces her to the distinguished guests. When Cassia sees Corvus, it becomes clear they knew each other before. It was because of Corvus's harassment that Cassia was forced to leave Rome and return home. During the party, Vesuvius suddenly wakes up again, causing a small earthquake. This not only frightens people, but also makes horses nervous. When Cassia realizes that her horse is out of control, she asks for Milo's help. Bellator, the gladiator, can't argue with the girl and lets him enter the stable alone. Milo quickly calms the horse, and Cassia, who followed him, sees that everything is fine. She suggests that the gladiator use this moment to escape, and he invites her to come along. The girl agrees, and they both run away from the villa. Soon, they are pursued, and Milo realizes it's better to surrender. Corva wanted to kill the fugitive, but Cassia asks for his pardon. In return, she promised to be kinder and more considerate to the senator. Corva agreed to the girl's terms and sentenced Milo to 15 lashes. Cassia asks her father Severus to stop the ongoing punishment, but Severus couldn't argue with the senator. When Milo returns to the cage, he communicates with Atticus, the champion, and tells him that he saw the man who took his family away. In turn, Atticus tells the Celt about his relatives, whom he hasn't seen for 20 years. As they get to know each other better, the men shake hands. Milo learns his name and understands that from that day on, he and Atticus are friends, and this won't change even in tomorrow's battle where they are destined to face each other. Unfamiliar with the gladiators, Corva orders a change in the schedule, with Milo's death scheduled for the first duel in the morning. People gather in the amphitheater to watch another gladiatoral fight. The Greek instructs Bellator to send Milo to the first duel, reminding him that Atticus will defeat any other opponent. They must grant him freedom. Unwilling to do so, the Greek changes his mind and orders the champion to be sent after Milo. Soon, the Greek notices cracks in the ceiling, and the amphitheater can't withstand the tremors. He points this out to Severus and asks to reschedule the duel, but the rich man refuses, sensing that something terrible is coming. Greg decides to leave the city for a few days. A staged fight is organized in the amphitheater's arena, reenacting the suppression of the Celtic rebellion by the Romans to please the senator. Milo, Atticus, and other gladiators are chained to a large tree and surrounded by dozens of other gladiators dressed as Roman soldiers. In this uneven battle, Milo and Atticus defeat their opponents one by one. After chopping down the tree, Milo mounts his horse and continues taking the lives of his enemies. The last gladiator falls within seconds, and then Milo dares to break the Roman standard. This offends Corva, as he had a different version for the production. Milo decides to punish the man who made him an orphan by throwing a piece of the standard like a spear at the senator. At the last moment, Proculus manages to save his master. Atticus and Milo find themselves surrounded by archers who want to execute the gladiators because they tried to harm the senator. Corva is ready to give the order for the execution, but Cassia intervenes. She signals to spare Milo's life and gain support from the audience. Cassia asks Corva to save Milo, and in return, she agrees to become his wife. However, there's a condition. The senator must not harm her parents. Severus and his wife are shocked by what's happening, but they don't dare to argue. They realize that Corva will deal with them if they protest. The senator orders that Cassia be locked up in his villa because he now claims ownership of her. At the same time, Mount Vesuvius awakens, but Corva calms the people and suggests that the gods demand another duel. He sends Proculus, the Roman champion of gladiator fights, to the arena. The two fighters engage in a duel just as the volcano erupts. Black volcanic ash covers the sky and the arena starts to collapse. Panic ensues among the people as they try to escape, while the gladiator fight continues. As the arena collapses, Milo fights Proculus and manages to free the other gladiators. Proculus escapes, leaving Bellator to a grim fate. When the amphitheater collapses, Cassia's parents are crushed by the rubble. Aurelia asks Severus to send the senator to the afterlife to save Cassia. Severus tries to fulfill his wife's request, but fails and gets mortally wounded, falling into an eternal sleep while holding Aurelia's hand. Upon meeting Proculus, Corvo orders him to take him to the harbor. Meanwhile, the Greek, unable to leave the city in time, pays the guards to let him board a ship and sail away from the coast as quickly as possible. The gladiators ascend to the arena and discover Cassia's parents, who have passed away. Aurelia asks Milo to take care of her daughter, revealing that Cassia is locked in a villa at the foot of Vesuvius. Atticus suggests running to the harbor, but Milo insists on staying with Cassia. Inside the villa, the Celt rescues Cassia from the collapsing and burning building. Unfortunately, her friend is less fortunate, as the rubble collapses, taking her body with it. Due to the large number of people causing a stampede in the dying city, Corva orders the elimination of anyone who obstructs their path. At that moment, a burning volcanic boulder approaches the senator, leading him to change his mind. 
Atticus, along with the others, attempts to flee the city's harbor but notices a colossal tsunami forming in the sea, capable of wiping out the city. He changes direction and saves a baby who has lost her mother. After the tsunami threat subsides, he returns the child to her mother. Meanwhile, Milo and Cassia take shelter from the falling rocks for a few minutes. Just as it seems the worst is over, it becomes apparent that Vesuvius continues to spew stones and Pompeii is on the brink of obliteration. Following a meeting with Atticus, Milo suggests heading to the arena to free the horses and use them to escape. The gladiators descend underground, encountering Roman soldiers. Cassia spots her deceased parents and bids them a final farewell. However, she is captured by Proculus and handed over to the senator. Corva chains Cassia to the chariot as he attempts to flee the doomed city. The gladiators have just faced off against the warriors and now find themselves facing Proculus. The senator is leaving, so they decide to split up. Atticus stays behind to confront Proculus, while Milo mounts his horse and races after the senator to rescue Cassia. In the battle, Proculus seriously injures Atticus, but he doesn't give up. He breaks his sword and uses a piece of it to fatally wound the Roman gladiator. Meanwhile, Cassia manages to break a piece of the board that's holding her hand captive. However, a cobblestone arrives, causing the chariot to overturn. Milo fights Corva and inflicts serious injuries on him. Cassia decides to assist the man she loves and chains Corva to the chariot. As they recall the events that occurred 17 years ago, Milo leaves the senator to his fate. The couple attempts to escape, but the horse can't carry them both. Realizing that they can't outrun Vesuvius, Milo and Cassia make the decision not to run. In their final moments, as they face certain death from the volcanic eruptions, the lovers share a kiss and meet their end. Atticus also meets a heroic end, facing a flow of scorching lava as he remains undefeated. Thank you for watching, and we hope you'll subscribe and like the video. See you soon!